Michael, can you tell us a little bit more about what are motor fluctuations and what are dyskinesias? So motor fluctuations and dyskinesias happen in the majority of Parkinson patients who have been treated with medications for a number of years. There's just less predictability. Medicines still work. Uh, so it's, it's not that they typically stop working, but their effect becomes more variable. Uh, and sometimes, again, complicated by excessive movements. You know, we're giving them the medicine to try to in, improve their movement, but sometimes we actually cause other problems with the medicines. And is there a specific timeline as to when those uh, complications, those motor complications, uh, start to emerge? It varies from patient to patient, mm -hmm. and, and some can go years and years, but most patients by five, seven years mm -hmm. of treatment mm -hmm. have started to experience either this wearing off phenomenon mm -hmm. or, and or the dyskinesias. And how do you go about treating uh, those complications when they arise? So there's a variety of approaches. Mm -hmm. One can be with medicines, continuing to work and fine tune the medication regimen. Mm -hmm. uh, and another uh, approach, which um, we, we use when we feel we've sort of maximized that or we're getting you know, severe tremor or severe dyskinesias will be something called deep brain stimulation. And it, severe, of course, is in the eye of the beholder, but when we feel like we've optimized as best as we can with the medicines, we now have the option of doing something called deep brain stimulation, which has been around since the 1980s, actually, mm -hmm. uh, and 1990s in the United States, to try to smooth out the response to the medicine. And that's, that's really helped a number of patients uh, maintain that good motor control. What do you tell a patient who has concerns about starting carbidopa levodopa um, because of developing some of these motor complications that you have just uh, uh, described? Right. There's a, there is a lot of concern out there among patients. They don't want to start this medicine because mm -hmm. they're afraid of these things happening. And part of the conversation is, again, not pushing a medicine if they're not ready for it, but explaining that it's more a part of the, the dose and the disease process. So if exactly. you wait many, many years to start it, you're probably just going to have a shorter period before you develop some of these challenges. So the standard treatment is to treat patients appropriately, not over-treat them, but to treat them with these medicines mm -hmm. when they need it, not delay for the sake of delay. And then we do, in select cases, have the DBS as an option, and there are other options now that are emerging for patients who do develop troublesome wearing off or dyskinesias. Right, and I think that we've seen now uh, a number of, of long-term outcome studies showing that reduced disability, um, overall disability in patients who uh, are, whose symptoms are treated adequately um, in terms of utilizing the medications rather than holding off mm -hmm. for 5, 10, 15 years. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, the jury is now uh, in on that.